4K, 120 hertz, can't stream it. 1440p, 240 hertz, who needs it? While bleeding edge formats are neat and all, they are an absolute nightmare for streaming, so I tend to not even bother until display standards mature a bit. And honestly, some of the nicest monitors come out when the format has had some age on it. That's what we get with this monitor right here. It is the BenQ EX2710R Mobius. Not sure what's up with the new Mobius branding, but it's effectively a sequel to the 2780Q right here, the EX2780Q that I reviewed back in December 2019, so two years ago. Specs-wise, we're looking at a 2560 by 1440, 165 hertz VA panel. The previous model was an IPS. I generally prefer IPS, but this at least doesn't have the weird pseudo scanline look that the last VA panel I looked like, looked at had, so it actually looks kind of nice. The frustrating part here is the curve, or at least at first. I've used curved 32-inch monitors, and my big ultra-wide I'm on now has a slight curve on it as well, and this helps prevent your eyes from vignetting when you're sitting up close. I sit fairly close to my monitors, but a super harsh curve like this on a 27-inch monitor just feels unnecessary. That being said, other than it awkwardly not fitting right in a multi-monitor setup with a non-curved monitor, it doesn't really feel all that out, place, out of place in, in use, like when gaming on it, I don't even notice it, so... Hey, this is another one of those HDR 400 monitors, so not super real HDR, but as stated in my last monitor review of the other BenQ monitor, the HDRI modes that they have, which are basically kind of like special color profiles when you enable HDR, uh, improves the image and they actually look stellar if you want a mostly HDR look with HDR enabled content. It's nothing like monitors with a ton of different, you know, zones or an OLED, but for what it is, Pretty nice looking. These BenQ monitors with the HDRI modes are one of the few scenarios where a cheaper monitor with lower end HDR specs or peak brightnesses actually performs pretty well. The speaker setup here, surprisingly enough, are killer. It's a 2.1 Travolo speaker setup with the two front firing speakers and then a sub pointed out the back. They sound stellar for monitor speakers, of course, and then pretty good overall. I know a lot of people think it's kind of ridiculous or don't care about this, but there's a always a lot of situations in my setups where I'd rather not have dedicated speakers, especially in the house where my kid can reach the desk, so the less cables and things to pull at, the better, and I'd rather not have a totally miserable listening experience. These are impressive. have good directionality for gameplay, nice sound quality for music and movie listening. Pretty nice. Supposedly there are DSP chips uh, to aid in tuning the audio, but I get the feeling that's marketing fluff. Just, if nothing else, by the plurality of there being multiple DSP chips, which is probably not what very, very accurate. In terms of refresh rate, 165 hertz is a silly, non-standard format that I wish would die. Yes. It's pretty darn smooth, but realistically, the frame time and input latency difference between 120 hertz and 144 hertz or 165 hertz gets into real diminishing returns territory, especially given that you need to generate an additional 45 frames, which puts additional load and could further negatively impact your input latency anyway, if you can hit those frame rates. Plus, 165 hertz is a nightmare for streaming. Not only do capture cards not support 165 hertz natively, but 165 is not an even multiple of 60. So if you manage to get, you know, display cloning working in the first place to a capture card, which admittedly is easier on Windows 11, as I've covered in a recent video linked below, you'll still have weird additional tearing or frame patient issues present that aren't present in 120 or I guess 180 hertz. The EX2710R also supports FreeSync Premium Pro, which is 
way too much of a name. Unfortunately, I can't really test this as AMD GPUs are just a meme for content creators, uh, and I don't have any that would drive a hundred, you know, 1440p 165 hertz in the first place. But you can enable G-Sync on it, and when you're connected over DisplayPort on it. It's not listed as G-Sync compatible, but you can still toggle it on and it seems to work. This is actually the first time that I've been able to enable G-Sync out of the box on a monitor that doesn't have G-Sync compatibility listed as certified or whatever without getting flicker or black screen issues. So that's kind of nice. Adaptive Sync, again, being a nightmare for streaming purposes anyway. The monitor features an assortment of preset color modes based on game type. So you have FPS, racing, RPG, or standard sRGB. There's also like reading mode and movie mode. There's also additional settings for sharpness boost, blur reduction, contrast, blue light reduction, and so on. Standard fair stuff at this point. Latency wise, when we're in the sRGB game mode, we are looking at 3.93 milliseconds at the top of the frame, so that's roughly about 4 milliseconds of input latency, 10.87 at the middle of the frame, and only 17.57 milliseconds at the bottom of the frame. And again, keep in mind, you go 0 to 16.67 milliseconds at the bottom of the frame being the minimum. So for the overall rendering here it's actually pretty fast however if you enable the fps color mode it actually does speed it up a little bit so that drops to 3.3 at the top 10.17 at the middle and 17.26 at the bottom so it's a fairly fast pattern panel it's definitely fast enough for responsive gaming and no input latency issues to my eye and i'm absurdly sensitive to that to where i can get like nauseous based on you know motion sick based on input latency so Pretty solid. I've been pretty happy with the monitor overall, and it has definitely taken over as my main gaming monitor and my new favorite since the last one they sent me, which was the EX2780 Q or whatever. Uh, it had a dead pixel out of the box when I reviewed it, and it got some scratches on it during the move. So I was already looking for an upgrade just because I got tired of looking at that, and this has definitely taken over as my favorite. The curve is actually... It's something that it takes a little while to get used to and sucks in multi-monitor workflows if you don't have m matching monitors, but it's, it's kind of nice to just sit there and feel like the screen's kind of coming at you. It comes with a decent stand, nothing to write home about, but it's solid. And then it has RGB at the back if you're a real gamer. One of the big things I want to work on for 2022 is with reviews like these not being pressured to have them live when the embargo drops, when the product originally launches, where I can spend my time to actually play with it, to show it with you all on stream, to get my hands dirty with it. And I'm able to do that thanks to the stability boons of building my own video streaming site with my creator friends. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with Curiosity Stream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and MKBHD. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended, from the YouTube versions. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for education and wanted to form an alliance. If you click the link below, you not only get access to Curiosity Stream and their library of thousands of documentary and educational content, but you get access to Nebula and all of our edutainment over there as well. Two sites for the price of one. Better yet, Curiosity Stream is currently running a holiday promotion where you get 42% off an annual subscription. Not the usual 26, 42% off making it less than $12 per year for both sites. Absolutely wild. While you're there, check out Messages from Space to learn about how potential broadcasts of a different kind, this time from radio waves in space, are measured, analyzed, and studied for clues about alien civilizations. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash ebos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $12 per year. 42% off. It's just bonkers. Just do it. That being said, price-wise, it is a $600 monitor, which feels, for 1440p, feels really hard to justify such a big price when you're bumping up against OLED or at least high-spec monitor territory, such as the new Gigabyte M32U everyone's talking about, which is 4K 120, if that's your speed, and 1440p 240Hz monitors are 800-ish usually, so... Uh, it's one of those where you're buying, like, a premium experience and you're not paying so much for the specs itself, but I'm not sure if for this price you can really justify it. I would pay $400 or $500 for it. I'm not sure I would pay $600. At least that's just for me. Product links, as always, will be in the description down below if you'd like to pick this up for yourself or check it out. And a link to all of my previous monitor reviews. I only do these like once a year. It's not something, frankly, I don't have the room or space for a ton of monitors anyway. So I don't have a ton of them, but I do enjoy playing around with new ones, and especially as refresh rates increase and things like that and having fun with them. Links will be down below, as well as my Twitch if you want to follow some of my streams, which some of this footage was from. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Join us on Discord, discord.gg slash and remember, be kind, rewind.